So what I hear you speaking to in my kind of paradigm is the um, fueling, if you will, the, the nourishing of this innate, the innate capacity to heal. And I don't know if that's a misinterpretation of what you're saying. See, when, when, you were, uh, when you were born, you were only this much, isn't it? Yes, well, now a little become... bit more. But... Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, ten pounds. <laughs> now you become this much. How did all this happen? Just the food that you've eaten, isn't it? Part of it. What do you mean part of it? What else? The love? No, love didn't add up here. It's only… it made it… maybe it made it sweet. <laughs> okay. You're not gathering love here, okay? That, that means people who are loud would be obese <laughs> You're giving an impetus to being obese, they can claim I've been loud <laughs> Yes, well… <laughs> love doesn't gather, fortunately <laughs> It's essentially the food, the material that you took from the planet, you integrated into this one as my body. So if you eat a piece of bread, over the afternoon, it turns into human body. When I say human body, do not think in terms of you, me like this. This is the most sophisticated equipment on the planet. Yes or no? The highest technology. Everybody is too engrossed in their iPhone, missing the eye. This is the real technology. <laughs> this is the technology on the planet. And you're producing such technology with a piece of bread, maybe a carrot, maybe an apple, maybe just anything that you eat, isn't it? So there is an intelligence here, there is a competence here, which is capable of turning a piece of bread into such a sophisticated piece of technology. Now, if you could make an iPhone with a slice of bread, would you con consider this miraculous and incredible? Yes. Right now you're doing much more than that, but doing unconsciously. If you can only consciously have a drop of this intelligence into your day-to-day -day life, health is not even an issue in your life, okay? You will live magically. And there is nobody here who doesn't have it. If it was in me and not in you, then it's an issue. There is nobody here who doesn't have it, everybody has this intelligence. Only thing is, they're looking for solutions outside, they're not looking for solutions inside. The manufacturer of this body is inside. If you had a repair job to do, would you like to go to the manufacturer or the local tinker? If you had the ID, you would go to the manufacturer. If you lost the ID, you fix it with the local mechanic, isn't it? It's an emergency, you call the local mechanic. Long-term health, you must go to the manufacturer, isn't it? <laughs> well, and I, I think that 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 is, a, is the essential shift that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't trained anything about or educated regarding anything about a capacity to heal. The medical paradigm and medical education, particularly physician education, has no recognition of that. So we feel that the concept that you could dial up the capacity to heal through things like you're discussing, working in the earth, Feeling the no, I'm, I'm saying those things, working in the earth and other things, if you're not willing to do anything else with yourself. But if you're willing to do something more focused with yourself, there are more sophisticated methods with which we can do this. You can change the quality of your system and chemistry in a matter of few days or weeks if you're willing to do a certain amount of work with yourself. Yes. This, these things are medically proved now. I mean, it need not be because the measurements, the instruments of measurement that we are employing today are insufficient to measure the capacity of the intelligence which is nature, the intelligence which is the basis of this creation. It is not enough. I must tell you this, uh, this is with due respect to everybody. This happened a few years ago, I mean almost twenty-six, twenty-seven years ago. I never subject myself to those indignities anymore. I happened to go to some institute and uh, something like this and uh, they said that we want to measure your gamma waves in your brain. I did not know I have gamma waves in my brain, I only know that it works and it's good enough for me. <laughs> I don't know if I have gamma waves. They said, no, you have when we want to measure. I was in an obligatory situation <laughs> so reluctantly I said, okay.
Then they said, okay, you come and they took me to one room which is uh, like a basement kind of thing, all glass on all sides because something outwardly, I don't know what it is, they were doing something to see that the external gamma waves don't come in and read something like that. I don't know, you sh somebody scientists should know these things. So they put fourteen different electrodes in my body and they said, you meditate. I said, I don't know how to meditate. They said, you teach everybody to meditate. I said, yes, I do teach people meditation because they do not know how to sit still. <laughs> I have no such issue, if I close my eyes, the world just vanishes for me. You know, if I close my eyes, the whole world just disappears for me. That is the idea of the eyelids, I always thought. If you close it, <laughs> the world should go. But people close it and run a private world of their own. So then their problem is they want the name of the meditation and how many gamma, how much gamma waves, whatever. Then they discussed and they said, okay, probably they called my meditation zero one or Z10 or something. <laughs> so I sat down. After about fifteen, twenty minutes, they were with a metallic object, they were hitting that funny spot on my elbow where it hurts most, you know. I thought maybe it's part of their experiment and I sat. Then they started hitting my ankle, then my knee, it became very persistent. <laughs> Initially I thought it must be the experiment, then I thought maybe they're trying to ask me to come out. They don't have to knock me up like this, if they just tell me I would open my eyes <laughs> Then it became painful. Then I opened my eyes, I said, what? Did I do something wrong to be beaten up like this? <laughs> they were all looking at me with a weird look on their face. I said, did I do something really wrong? They said, according to our instruments, you're dead. Oh. I said, that's a fantastic diagnosis <laughs> <laughs> Then they've changed their opinion, they said, either you're dead or your brain is dead. I said, please don't give me a certificate like that, that's too insulting, I'll go by the first opinion. <laughs> dead certificate, death certificate is okay. Brain dead certificate is, you know, how do I exist <laughs> What… why I'm saying this is, we are trying to bring down everything to physicality. We are making physicality supreme. We need to understand this. In this creation, in this vast cosmos, physical is just few specks, maybe a few billion stars, but still they're just a few specks in the vastness of nothingness, isn't it? Nothing means… Uh, when I say nothing, you must understand this. You must put a hyphen between no and thing. It is not a thing. But today we know it is the most powerful, space is the most powerful dimension of existence. This has happened to us because the way our sense organs function, the way our visual operate, uh, apparatus function, see right now, what is it that you can see? Only that which stops light you can see. That which allows light to pass through or that which is light itself you cannot see. Now you can see this hand because it stops light. Suppose my hand became so wonderful, it doesn't stop light, you wouldn't see my hand, isn't it? So you… because our visual apparatus are like this, you only see those things which stop light. Because of that, we have come to these conclusions that physical is everything, because physical is all that is in our experience. <laughs>